Let's go over the instructions for Python Lesson 5. So I've got the Python Lesson 5 open, and of course you're going to do your warm-up, and this is asking you about three errors you might have made. And um, you can think back to any of your programs, and even some things that I might have pointed out in class. So list some errors. It could be spelling, it could be indenting, it could be punctuation. And then when you go to the next slide, it's talking to you about the class schedule program with images. This assignment will use your code from Lesson 4, which was the class schedules program. You need to open your Lesson 4 assignment and load your program by clicking on the URL. And then follow the instructions either in the slides or in the video. Um, and you can use both. So maybe you're looking at the video, and if it's hard to see what I'm typing, then you can come back to the slides right here and see a big picture of it. Get the instructions and see where to type things, maybe using the video. So you can even go back and forth. An overview of what you will be doing in this lesson. You're going to add code to your program that will select an image for each class on your schedule. For your opening picture of pick zero, select the school picture and then select one picture for each class. The images on the table and the next slide are the only images you have available to use. If you have a class that is not represented, just select one of these images anyway. So your picture doesn't have to be an exact match. You're just going to pick four pictures because hopefully you put four classes or maybe you have three classes in your schedule. So I'm going to open up my Python lesson four, and if you turned it in, you can still find it. You can see it in the returned or the turned in, but you have access to all your assignments, whether you turn them in or not. So you're going to open up your lesson four, go all the way to the bottom or the last place where you saved your code, click on your link. And if you have trouble clicking it, you have to hold down the control key when you click on it, or you can just copy this, copy your code, control C, and then um, click on go into um, Chrome, if you're not there already, and you can paste it. So here's my lesson four, and you can do a quick look to see, um, like one thing I can do is I can change the date to the current date. I can change the, schedule, the lesson to lesson five. And where it says class schedule, I can say with images or with pictures. So I can modify this comment block at the top. So you can take a good look at your period four, I mean, at your lesson four, make sure you have all the parts to it. You can even run it and it should come up and maybe it looks something kind of like this. And what we're gonna do for lesson five is add images to it. Now, our, so I can close lesson four. I've got the code that I needed. In lesson five, I'm gonna go to the next slide. And the first thing it says is to update the comment block. We just did that. And then save the program. So this creates our version history so we can go back when we need to. So I'm gonna click on this save button right here. I'm going to copy this URL, control C, go to my document and do a control V. So I'm going to paste it in there Then I can go back to it if I need to. On the next slide, now at the top of your code, it's not going to be at the very, very top, but it's going to be up there where our variables are. You're going to add a line of code for your images. This first image is going to be a picture of the school. You're going to find the exact URL on the table. But I also put it right here on the slide just to make it easy for you so you wouldn't have to look for it. So you can take this entire line that's in blue, copy the entire thing from pick zero all the way to the last parenthesis. I'm going to copy the whole thing, do a control C, and I'm going to come to my code and I'm going to go after the color, so like line 12, and I'm going to do a paste. So it's kind of long and check to make sure that you end with a quotation mark and parenthesis. So I have just imported an image to use in my code, pick zero. And I want to add pick one, two, three, and four, one for each class. So I'm going to do a pick one equals, I'm going to do a pick two equals, a pick three, and a pick four. So I need one for each class. I'm also going to need this simple GUI, this, you know, this whole thing here, so I can start with it. And then I'm going to end with quotation marks and parentheses. So I'm going to make sure I do that at the end. But if I do a little bit of cut and paste early on, it can you know, help me without making um, mistakes and that I have all the pieces that I need. So notice that it's here near the top where all my variables are. These picture images are also going to be variables. Now on my slide, if I go to the next slide, here's my table of images that you can use. And it's kind of little, but here in the table, are the URLs. So let me see if I can zoom in on this a little bit too. So I see this art, avid ceramics, it's a whole bunch. And 
as I mentioned in the instructions, if one of your classes is not listed here, just pick a picture anyway. So maybe in my next class, I want to use computer. So I'm going to take this entire, make sure you start at the beginning and go to the end. So the entire URL, I'm going to copy it. Control C, come here to my code, Control V for paste. And then I can check to see I need to end with a quotation mark and a parenthesis. Double check, make sure that you have your quotation mark and your parenthesis. Now for my next class, um, it's probably not the same one you have, but maybe I have um, a math class. So I'm going to take this code right here, copy it, control C, go to my document, my code, and then remember to end with the quotation marks parenthesis. And then my next one would be lunch, and I know there's a lunch picture. So I'm going to find lunch, copy it. And I'm going to put that here for pick three. Remember, quotation marks, parentheses, and then I have one more. And so maybe I have science. Highlight it. Control C. Then quotation marks and parentheses. So I've got all of my variables, all my picture variables in there for that part of the, the um, instructions. So step four said add four more pictures. One for each class period, select the appropriate image for each class. So this is an example of what your code would look like. You could also see it here. And um, if, and you were just picking at least, you know, you have, you know, four or five different pictures, that's what you need. Now for our next step, we have to add three more variables. And notice where I put them right after all the pictures. So around, um, number 17 i'm going to do my pick equals pick zero and you can you have to be careful with your spelling because you're going to use my pick many times so either capitalize the p or don't but be careful that you spell it the same way that you're consistent and then pick zero i already have this variable so i have to make sure that i'm matching so i'm going to come right below where my and i can add some space if i want to make space i'm going to do my pick equals pick zero and then i'm going to do my pick and I'm going to do the size of it and that's in parentheses 150 by 150 so all the pictures that you're using from the table I'll have the size 150 by 150 so that's why we're using them and not just any picture okay and then this last one is kind of complicated I'm saying where the center of that picture is so I have to do this code and you might want to just do a snippet of it or have your screen split a little bit so you can get the typing exactly right but it's, um, I first I'm going to do my image. Oh, I said my pick. So light, sorry, this is a mistake. Um, the size is called image underscore SZ for size. So the size is 150 by 150. And then I'm going to do the center. So IMG underscore CTR, short for center. And then I'm going to put a parenthesis. And then I'm going to have image underscore size. And then I use the square bracket, zero, square bracket slash slash two so that's the first part and then a comma and i'm going to repeat this image underscore sz and then in my square brackets i'm going to put a one and then slash slash two so that's a lot of typing to get right so just be really careful where you have a parenthesis where you have a square bracket and so go slow if you need to but that's so these three lines of code are what you're going to add underneath the picture so where you put them is important, so you might even pay attention to the line numbers. They don't have to be exactly like this, but this is giving you an idea of where the code goes. Okay, for the next slide, now that we've got our variables, we are going to use them in the functions. So step six, add code to each period function. So you have period one, period two, period three, period four, to each period function to display the image. If you Follow the naming convention shown above, this will be easy. So my pick, and I used a capital P, so you want to be careful with your spelling. What you just created is your global variable, and you change its value in each function to the pick for that class. So for period one, first of all, it's a global variable. So I am, for me, this is like around line 22, so it'll be somewhere around there for you. Where I have this whole line of global variables, I'm going to need to include a comma, my pick. 
make sure that you spell this the same way that you spelled it up here. So I need to make it global and then somewhere in here, and I can just put it at the end, it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna press enter, so get a new line, my pick equals, and I'm gonna say pick one because this is in period one. I'm gonna do the same thing for all my functions. So for period two, once in my global line, I have to say comma, my pick, and then press get a new line, my pick, spelling is very important, equals, and then it's gonna be pick two, because this is period two. And then you should be able to do period three and period four. So we're just following the same convention, typing in the same lines, making my pick global, and then getting a new line and assigning my pick to the picture for that period. So here I do pick three, and then for the last one, I would do pick four. So you're gonna have to match it for what you did. If you have three periods or four periods or whatever you did, you're gonna match. So step six, repeat this step for the other three functions and using the correct picture variable for each period. So that's what we just did. If you need to stop and pause the, this video while you're typing it, you can do so. Step seven, one more thing to do. Right now the image won't be displayed. So I can run the code and I shouldn't get any errors, but you also notice that my picture doesn't show either. I'll add a line of code in your draw handler function to display the image. This is near the bottom of your code. Once again, be very careful with your typing, it must be exact. So I included it here, it's in blue. So if you wanna just highlight the whole thing, like we did earlier to get our first picture, so I can highlight all this code and copy it. So Control C, you can see where you're gonna put it is at the end of your draw function. Well, my draw function is right after all the functions, the other one, so I have it right here as my draw function. I'm gonna add a new line, so I press Enter and paste. So watch the indenting. Okay, everything inside a function needs to be indented the same amount. And if I just copy and paste it, if these are the same image names that you've created earlier, then you'll be good. So make sure that what I typed here matches what you typed up here. If there's any kind of spelling mistake, you're gonna have to fix it. The spelling has to be consistent. Now when I run it, I get a picture. And for every class period, I get a picture. You may also notice that your image kind of covers up the words, so we can fix that. I'm gonna to come to the next step here. Run your program and click all your buttons in any order. It should display three lines of text and an image for each class period. However, the image covers up the text. Fix this problem by changing the location of the lines of text. You can use numbers like this. So I use 60, 90, 120 instead of what was there. Now we've already practiced. This is back from lesson two. We practiced changing the location. So this is a suggestion, but you can really pick the numbers that you would like just so that they're not overlapping. So I'm gonna come back here to my code. Right now I have 100. So instead of 100, I wanna move it up, which means a smaller second number. So I'm gonna say 60. Then I wanna increase it by 30 each because my numbers are 24. So I'm gonna make this one, um, 60 plus 30 is 90. And then 90 plus 30 is 120, so that's where I got the numbers. But you can really use different numbers here. You just wanna make them lower because the lower the number, the higher the text location. So now I can see all my words. I can see my picture. It's looking good. Run your program and click all your buttons in any order. It should display three lines of text and an image for each class period. So now we're gonna save, copy and paste our URL, and then do our wrap up. So I'm over here and I'm going to click my save button. I'm gonna to come to the top where the URL is. I can just highlight the entire thing. So make sure you give me the entire URL. If you give me only part of it, I won't be able to run your code and you won't get a grade. So the entire thing, do a control C, come to your document, click on slide 17, do a control V. And then you're gonna come here and do your wrap up and answer these three questions and you'll be ready to turn it in.